Welcome to the Decentralized News Show. We will cover stories that affect the crypto markets from major headlines to DeFi rumors. We cover as much as we can to try to keep up with this dynamic space. As usual, um, there's a bunch to get to, and this is a bit of a Christmas special. Um, we normally record on Saturday, but that'll be Christmas Eve. So me and Ozzy jumped in to try to keep up with this space. But um, before we get into it, this is not financial advice, and we are not financial advisors. This content is presented for educational and entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research before making any investment choices. Uh, how's it going, Ozzy? It's going pretty good. Going pretty good. I'm I'm super excited. Uh, there's, it's not as packed of a show as we normally have, but uh, it's going to be great. Uh, lots and lots of news to cover today. Yeah, we got a Christmas Eve tomorrow. Merry Christmas to you, by the way. I don't know if you celebrate, but yeah, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, enjoy it. I think it's gonna. We got a big storm here, but uh, and as does most of the most of North America, but should be great fun. So, looking forward well, to looking it. Forward to, yeah, well, I'm, and I'm looking forward to doing this show with you. Um, this is the first time just me and you doing this. Let's let's get into it. Um, bankrupt crypto firm Voyager will sell their assets to Binance US for one billion dollars. Yeah, that's pretty big. I mean. It's more, people are debating what it means for the whole market. Uh, people kind of, a bunch of people are saying like Binance doesn't need to do this. Like they don't need to to buy um, Voyager, but they might be doing it to kind of help prop up the market or um, just bring help bring some bullish sentiment back. I mean, uh, CZ said he wants to help make investors whole, um, but other people are kind of concerned because it is very similar to a pattern of behavior that FTX did, um, like right, right, but like in the lead up to them going bankrupt, so and losing all customer funds. So it's very interesting to see exactly how how this will happen. I mean, they've they've said they'll purchase it for right right around a billion dollars, um, and it would help kind of drive people that were using Voyager to Binance US rather than potentially going to Coinbase, which would probably be the alternative. Like in the US, it'd be between uh, Binance US and Coinbase. So it'll be interesting to see if this goes through. I mean, they've only put through a $10 million uh, good faith payment um, and will re reimburse up to another $15 million. So this is not uh, a done deal. They still have till April 18th, 2023 um, to just to close the deal and with a potential one month extension. So this is still still an ongoing story. There's not it's not a guarantee that if you were um, using Voyager that um, Coinbase that uh, Binance US is going to buy these assets, and you are potentially going to be made whole. So keep your eyes out. It'll be something to keep uh, to keep our eyes on, especially given all the Binance fud in the past, and uh, even well, even Binance currently. is just becoming such a big point of failure in the DeFi space. It just puts more pressure on them, like or something else. And like you said, it's similar pattern as FTX, and then what came out about not. You know, the audits, just some fun around there about the audit firm pulling the report and kind of what's come out lately about they don't, we don't really know what's going on with their liabilities. Like they say, they don't have any liabilities and that may or may not be true. Um, and also just this idea that DeFi is supposed to be decentralized. And yeah, but Binance you know, isn't you necessarily think... DeFi. Binance is, Binance right, is you, a centralized you exchange. Coinbase. You, you mentioned Coinbase, and this is what, you know, big business does, right? They try to get as much market share as they can. But is that, is that what DeFi, you know, was meant to be or what we all want out of DeFi? I guess that would be my question. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like, I'd want to see more decentralization. But, it, I mean, this is what big businesses do. They go for as much market shares as they can get. 
and they have a chance to buy a distressed asset at a deal probably i guess it's going on you know and like you said it's going to push people to their their platform as opposed to others competing with coinbase crypto.com things like that you know yeah and i mean that's exactly what they they want they they really want that kind of uh that kind of thing so we'll we'll see and i mean the market going up on in crypto is good for all centralized exchanges because it brings more people back using their platform, more people trading, um, which means more fees and they'd be well positioned. Yeah, if it turns around, they'd yeah. be very well positioned right now. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Um, and and even you know, CZ selling that five hundred million to start, you know, and potentially being involved with you know having influence over ftx going down i know there's that quick counter argument that it was going to happen anyway it's better it happened sooner because ftx was only going to get bigger and then crash but still it's competitive you know competitive market absolutely i mean it's very interesting because this could help the overall market and i mean we're seeing more and more a kind of adoption news um and crypto payment news if you think about it um visa has just announced that they're going to be doing automated payments for um with starknet which is a really great airdrop opportunity if you're if you're looking for it it's a layer two built on ethereum it's a kind of one of those roll-ups and they're they're going to be allowing um automated payments so um with uh, self self custodial wallets, so you know now most debit cards and credit cards that are for crypto are on a centralized exchange. This is kind of the the first one that seems like a a potentiality that it could be done from a uh, like from your MetaMask or a, a self custodial wallet, which is pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, so it's automated payments, and I guess what's a big deal about that with the blockchain is that normally the user has to initiate the transaction so it's um it's this idea of a push versus a pull payment uh, so um you're pushing it through the blockchain can do that but to do a pull where it's automatically taken out to pay like your mortgage or something like that um it's more development complicated yeah development needs to happen like so somehow there's you know a third party that can I, i'm not sure exactly how it works but yeah development has to happen there just because of the nature of bitcoin or nature of blockchain and that it's more for push payments not pull payments so that's kind of the big development here exactly so and it's adoption for eth like um so that's pretty interesting i think yeah. eth will continue to be yeah, the big yeah. player and we've got a few other stories relating to eth and i know you're more of a big coin maxi yourself so we can probably talk about that Absolutely. but, <laughs> but uh, we'll good. probably hop to just a couple of the other payment stories um with Hu- hubio uh or huob i don't know the right way to pronounce it but they're they're announcing mm-hmm. plans to launch um their own visa card so visa really like making a big splash this this month um so and they're planning to release it worldwide so you know what i think when when i think of that is my BlockFi credit card yeah that's kind of the I big mean, comparison. i mean i had i had a BlockFi credit card and i made it so i just put all my spending i could on that so the rewards i was earning was in bitcoin and luckily i Mo- I probably spent two years, I don't know, more, a year or more of just all my all my bills as much as possible coming out of there, food, gas, whatever I could. And luckily I pulled out before it shut down, but, you know, those rewards that I earned are just locked up, you know, and could have could have all been locked up because it's a smaller amount, right? So you're not, you know, pulling it, but it's not your keys, not your coins. And these things can shut down. So, but yeah. anyway, uh, it's still, still good. And, and BlockFi, you know, came and went. So hopefully something else comes along. But and then the other thing that comes to mind is just it's Visa and it's credit cards. 
and I know they, they know how to make good deals. So anytime I'm dealing with the, the reward system in a credit card, I feel like they're still winning <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Yeah, but it's kind of interesting. Like, I mean, this is like still kind of like your classic um, centralized exchange. But given it right. seems like Visa is also making a play towards the uh, the self custodial, so not having that risk. So, kind of an yeah. interesting double double take from Visa, and then. Unfortunately, there's the other kind of news story, and we've already talked touched on them a little bit today. But um, FTX continues to be a huge, huge player in the news. I think we've got eight stories this week about them, and some of them is just spreading kind of some of that other spread of the fud and kind of ripple effects. But you know, this whole FTX story is done for me. Oh, I when know. I, when I see when I see a poop emoji, it's Sam Bankman free now. <laughs> oh Lord, Lordy that's Lord, make, that's what he that's what he did to DeFi in general. I mean, he made Bitcoin look like a rose, but yeah, he hurt my, the market pretty bad. And yeah, yeah, it's it's hard, like just talking about him day after day. But I yeah. mean. FTX and centralized exchanges have a huge impact on the market. So, and now that he donated a bunch of money politically, which just adds like a layer of mistrust to any information you're getting now that it's political, you know, it's just like, oh, what is this? Now what's going on? It's yeah. just ugly, the whole thing, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, like you said, there's there's dominoes that are still falling. Mojito Markets project suspended due to FTX crash. Also, Caroline Edison and Gary Wang pleaded guilty and have deals that maybe are cornering Sam Bakeman Freed. So it's kind of going both ways. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very interested to understand if they actually are talking to the real Gary Wang. Uh, I, I I don't know if you were able to listen to that podcast episode, but one of the first podcast episodes that I did with the Obsidian Table, um, we talked about, we were having a whole discussion on whether Gary Wang was a real person. Um, oh. Because there are no I pictures of Gary that Wang. Yeah. There's no pictures of him. So I'm yeah. really interested to know if they actually have a the real person named Gary Wang. Cuz if they did, that's like game changer because he's been kind of like a silent partner that no one's ever seen before. So So you're saying so you're saying he could be Satoshi Nakamoto. He could be. <laughs> he could also be the Chinese government. We don't really know. Yeah. Like that that was Yeah, and like I said, like now that there's political donations involved, it's just like there's going to be a lot of light shined on this, but yeah, once that once that starts getting involved, it's just harder to trust. It just gets, you know, turns into political football, and people start protecting their interests and stuff. It makes it harder to trust what I'm reading, in, in my opinion. But anyway, it's a it's a huge story. But the guy got out. I guess his parents put up a two hundred. They have like a two hundred fifty million dollar house. Okay. Yeah, and they're they're the ones that got him out, and it's like, man, I, I saw a tweet. It was funny. It's just like, where do these guys live in a castle? You know, like there's like in the Bahamas, like you know, maybe they own their own. They have a private island with a very very large. Um, and I, I remember the, their parents buying property with possibly funds from FTX. Or did you do you, you remember reading anything about that? They were his parents had bought a bunch of real estate in the Bahamas. Um, I don't remember if there was allegations yeah. if it was right. his money or not, or the it's FTX money or not. But yeah, yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a couple of other kind of associated stories um, yeah, as that. part of um, this whole court case against. Um, 
against um, FTX. Um, the SEC has deemed that their FTT token is a security. So, and that is that that story just like no splash to it. Like, why now? What is the big deal about? Well, it's because they're charging. They've charged Caroline, and Uh, Gary is his assumed name, but it's Z Zhao, if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, Wang, with manipulating a security as part of it. Mm -hmm. So, so as they go forward with the trial, having this thing labeled as a security will help them form their case. Potentially. And mm-hmm. it'll potentially on the surface, it looks like. Yeah, on the surface. And it, it potentially helps um protect investors more because securities there are like certain things related to securities yeah. that um are supposed to protect investors more. So that's kind of a another move that's uh important to consider. Um so that's kind of especially as we get into regulation news a little bit later on, um, this is a big decision for the US. So um, so yeah, that that's kind of big. And the other one that I think we should probably kind of mention, and, and it kind of relates, it would make sense um, if FTX, um, if FTT was a, a security, is they paid for 94% of their block folio deal in FTT tokens. Right, yeah. So they're purchasing assets with money they created. Yeah. They paid for Blockfolio, an FTT token, which is a token they invented, and... 94%. Yeah. And they, even, they manipulated. Like, they... <laughs> like, Caroline Edis- Edison, uh, Ellison was manipulating the price of FTT. So, through Alameda Research. So, um, this is, like, she could have pumped the price. Right. And then they only had to pay whatever uh, number. It was, it was roughly $84 million um, to take a major the majority stake. So, that's kind of a another interesting kind of side, side effect of... Um, of this whole FTX, FTT, Alameda Research, SBF disaster. Yeah, um, I'm not too familiar with what Blockfolio does, but they're probably in trouble or closed down already. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know too much about Blockfolio myself, but I mean... I've never used it or anything. Yeah. And then this is kind of... This will get your, your tails... Your, your head up and not too happy um modulo capital modulo capital which is a um hedge fund that was founded by some some former colleagues and uh of sbf um he sam bankman fried gave them 400 million And this came out on the 19th. They were apparently operating out of the same condominium community as San Bankman Freed and the other FTX employees. 400 million here, half a billion there, no big deal. Yeah. So. It's very, very weird. I mean, maybe it's... I mean, if he's... I, I, mean, I could speculate all day. I'm not even going to go there. But yeah, it's it's ugly. It's I mean, the, the kind of money that's going around is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of connections between uh, Modulo and... Uh, Modulo Capital and and Sam Bankman Feed. So this is kind of... It'll be interesting to see. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I wonder of this money that he gave out, how much of it is still there? Yeah. In the system, you know, it's like okay, you pay four hundred million, and now 
he's in jail for stealing what what happens with that money you know it's kind of like what happens with the political donations it's like it all goes through PACs and nobody has to give it back but there'll be political pressure to give it back how much of it actually comes back you know? well it was invested through Almeida so right as so technically like and it was disclosed as part of their um as part of their um bankruptcy filing so at the very least that money should be going yeah. back oh that's good yeah. it's just yeah how much is how much is left and it kind of at least yeah it's <laughs> still complicated it it, it doesn't right. really fill that hole the 8 billion dollar hole that they've got but no. it it at least kind of says shows a little bit of potential uh where some of that money is and how he might have been misusing funds and misappropriating right, just funds. What, what they were doing with it. I mean, the story will unfold. Um, but yeah, it's, all of it seems to be pretty ugly, what's coming out about it. Um, but still yet, I don't know, are you ready to, you want to move on from Sam Bakerman for you? Yeah, let's, let's move on. <laughs> but still yet, even with all this, these gut punches to DeFi, Nigeria will pass a bill to recognize cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Which surprised me a little because it wasn't it was a couple weeks ago on the new show. There was some FUD coming out of Nigeria. I think you were Yeah, I mean they were they they were limiting um how much citizens could withdraw from um Yeah they're limiting the, the fiat connection. Yeah. The there you could only pull out so many dollars um mm. i think it was like 300 dollars a day or a week um for All bank accounts that's yeah that sounds familiar but at the same time they're a country that really uses it in that like original use case like peer-to-peer -peer decentralized um so it's interesting um to watch nigeria kind of go through this and develop yeah they're going to recognize cryptocurrencies. Well, yeah, they're also developing their own CBDC. That's been something that they've, they've been talking about. So this is kind of, it's very interesting to see um, adoption already happening and like even just regulation happening in less developed countries, to, to put it um, gently. Like just, it's not happening in the US, but it is happening in in Nigeria, and then, I mean, even more so, um, Brazil just announced that they're um, that they just passed a law uh, regulating the use of cryptocurrencies as investments and as payments as means of payment. So, where was it? Sorry, I missed Brazil. So, oh, right. Yeah, that was a story that came out, but the president had to sign it. So it's not. As far as um, recognizing Bitcoin as legal tender in the country, but it is a big step forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it recognizes it as means of payment, and it at least yeah. regulates that. So that's pretty pretty interesting. And uh, I think, from my understanding, it has been signed now. He did end up. Yeah, that, that was the news. Like it did get signed. There was a line item veto available for the president. I'd have to read about it to see if, if anything was changed on it. But um, yeah, it's still exciting news uh, and adoption from Brazil, which um, that's a big country. I mean, Nigeria, Brazil, I mean, these are, you know, second world, third world countries coming up, um, embracing a new technology. It's exciting to see. I, I definitely say they're kind of like, those are two kind of up and coming countries in uh, overall, like throughout the world, they're kind of, they definitely have been making a splash. And I mean, if we think back to shows we were making about three months ago, um, there was a lot of payment cards coming to um, to Argentina, Brazil, uh, and a few kind of other countries, Nigeria, I think, being one of them. And so this is kind of showing, oh, it started with payment cards. Now, now we're seeing actual regulation from the country, like Maybe it's yeah, a little bit of a path forward for looking towards the U.S., Europe, and, and North America. Well, the, that's one of the big differences with, um, you know, 
smaller economies that are don't have the banking system that we have in Canada and the United States, there's, it's not like me and you are going out like, oh, I need this in order to do what I need to do. I don't have access to money or to a bank. Um, where in other countries, it's more necessary. So to have a peer-to-peer -peer network um, and kind of the original idea of why the blockchain was invented, it's more of a true need. So it's exciting to see the adoption in these areas. Yeah, and if we kind of move looking a little bit more U.S. and Canadian-centric, uh, Coinbase thinks that this year is kind of the year um, for regulation really evolving in the U.S. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, hearing that, the first thing that comes to mind is just prolonged um, bear market. Like, it's just like additional news that can kind of pound it down as it tries to dig out, you know, regulation news coming out. Yeah, it's... It, Throughout the year. It's good and bad. Because like I, can I paint, you can paint that picture, sort of. Um, it's not to say it can't fight through. And also, this is the first bear market where we're in um, raising interest rates and potential recession environment. Yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely totally possible. New. But, I mean, I think regulation has kind of been the one kind of last piece of clarity that a lot of the crypto market, for really, it really to flourish within the U.S. And, and Canada and Europe, like, that's kind of been the missing piece. So, potentially, so potentially it will mean that we can, you know, very easily bring cash to like cash to, to crypto and crypto to cash without necessarily needing um, in Canada, like you generally have to do peer to peer. Like I send a, I deposit cash into someone else's bank account and they release crypto to me. Um, so potentially being able to just deposit. In yeah. In Canada, that's how it, that's how for the most part it has to work. Um, yeah. I mean, and that's why like they say you can never, actually get rid of bitcoin it can't be outlawed it, outlawing it would just slow it down peer to peer n no one can stop it well, that's it so um so that's kind of a big big thing and it i think by like yes regulation might dump the market like one last time especially because there has been a story that the sec and uh, regulators have been talking to I had been talking to FTX and talking with FTX more than they had talked with any other group um, in crypto. So, um, you know, that's not not great. And building a special re regulatory framework specifically around what FTX wanted to do. But um, it'll be interesting to see how that, that all plays yeah. through. Regulation has a, has a big part in it. So it's like... If you believe in kind of blockchain and the, that it's going to change, you know, just money in the future and everything that that affects, it's going to interact and go kind of up against larger players. Is it going to be uh, like a friendly? Are we going to are they going to collaborate or are they going to fight it tooth and nail? Is it going to be a ten year? you know, honeymoon and marriage, or is it going to be a hundred year war? You know? Yeah. Along those lines, um, the SEC, one of the SEC commissioners, uh, Hester Pierce, um, says there's a ton of problems with the SEC's how we test and how it applies to cryptocurrencies and crypto assets. So uh. a lot of people are kind of worried because with the, based on the how we test, more or less most cryptocurrencies would likely be labeled a security um, but um, Hester Pierce is kind of saying um, ha, is saying that there's a lot of limitations with that and so maybe maybe that's kind of sign that they're going to approach digital assets slightly differently than how they're doing it now and so that maybe could be the Sam Bakeman free test I mean, it seems like they need a new law 
it's more like a more advanced Howie or like a Howie three point oh test. <laughs> that they they'll need some kind of new new test and just a better a better way of approaching it. I mean, the SC like getting solid, solid but, precedent. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be precedent, but I, I'm just thinking like it's pretty hard to get a security approved in the U.S. And so, if every d- digital asset that's launched by a person is considered a security, then essentially the U.S. will never be able to have cryptocurrencies because everything will have to be filed as a security, even if you're like. Even if I'm in Canada creating creating this uh, this new digital asset, I would just basically have to block U.S. citizens if the the SEC would not approve me as a security. So, and they have a tendency to deny most secure a lot of a lot of crypto asset securities. So, um, what was it? SEC chair. Um, there was a tweet from him. Uh, not Gary from Gensler. Him, but... Gary Gensler, yeah, it was. Dude, I lost. Oh, okay. Crypto crackdown is just getting started, says SEC Chair Gary Gensler. Yeah, I mean, he's and and there's the whole X, XRP. So whatever happens with that, people are looking for as as a sign of precedent or what what they're going to do moving forward. Yeah, well, that's it. Um... I'll get spilled. Gary Gensler's like really hardcore against Hester Pierce is kind of the crypto mom is kind of her nickname. She's a lot more pro crypto than uh, than Gary Gensler, so that's kind of it'll be interesting to is see she how the regulates off. Yeah, she's a commissioner. She's an SEC commissioner. Oh, okay. Um, but kind of moving on. Uh, yeah.
So, okay. um, as part of, you know, we talked about Tron, uh, about uh, Telegram and their new blockchain and how they were doing sales of anonymous uh, numbers. So, this number, 888-888, sold for um, over $700,000. It sounded like you said Tron, but you're talking about the Ton. The yeah, Ton. I, I said Tron, but I meant Ton. Um, yeah, they that anonymous number, not tied to a SIM card, sold for seven hundred thousand dollars. Must be nice. I wish I had that kind of money to put to a phone number. Yeah, I. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I, I we've talked about it before. Like Telegram feels a bit more like what a scam if, platform. Is it some special number like nine six seven five three two four? Well, I mean, it's kind of like a lot. Maybe it's kind of associated with like you know one eight hundred numbers eight 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 eight. Like yeah, well, or if it's five 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 or yeah, like that Jenny song, <laughs> some famous number. Yeah, so like Telegram's a bunch of scams. So maybe like did a scam artist buy this number because they think it's like people will think it's a uh, or to put on my like, super tinfoil hat, it's like, did the founder buy it to hype the project and get a story? <laughs> I mean, yeah. other the thing is, is there's other um, numbers that sold, um, not for as much, but I mean, there. It looked like there was a bidding war between. I'm looking at the bids, three or four different um, different people, at least. As you look at the top, there was like an EF. Yeah, but with, with all this excitement with Telegram, it's still kind of known for scams. And there was another scam story, you know. Yeah. Um, so I mean, as much as it's like, it looks like a DGEN play to me. Like, part of me wants to play around with the coin, just because there's not a lot going on in DeFi and there's activity here, you know. But I, I just don't I'm not going there. Yeah, it, it's kind of. It, it feel it's getting hyped up really fast, and I'm just like I'm waiting for someone to dump a ton of the tokens. Like, it's yeah, it's hard. To, it was kind of like that last week we talked about that Trump NFT. Like it pumped up, and when we were talking about, it, it was pretty much the top. Where you could have sold out, but yeah, it, it went like, up for another day or two, I think. But yeah, then it started. Uh, it kind of topped out from there. No, but by the next day it was half. You know, and it's it settled in, but like. And you still could make money selling it if you bought the original ones, but yeah. Anyway, um, there's yeah, there's not a lot going on in DeFi, so maybe just really excited about it now, and it could dissipate quickly, you know. And yeah. like with the story, this like the the hack story. What was the hack story? A bunch of numbers were being being hacked. A bunch of accounts were being hacked, and so a bunch of bunch of numbers. It's like ugh. Yeah, lots of users, and they were uh, suggesting everyone turn on 2FA. So um, that's something to take into consideration. Um, Any, anytime you can, it's usually a good idea to initiate 2FA. Anything you can do to increase your security in this space. Yeah. So let's get to the last story, because I know you've got to get going, and I've got to start getting ready for some Christmas plans. But... Yeah. Talking about Bitcoin dominant, uh, dominance, chain analysis in their um, 22 geography uh, uh, of cryptocurrency report, they they said that the prominence of DeFi within North America actually reduced Bitcoin's dominance overall on the crypto market. So, like, cryptocurrency is seeing adoption. But in North America, DeFi plays like you and I like to dabble in quite a bit. Their yeah. dominance in North America reduced just how prominent um, Bitcoin was as the, the market leader. Um, Everyone was distracted by by all by the DGEN plans. All the yeah, all the, all the possibilities, but the and forgot about like the true original technology sorry you already claim me as a maxi so yeah i mean you are a maxi so but i i mean i think this is kind of a sign of what's to come is that like my big 
my ethos going into the 2025 probably bull market, 2024, 2025 bull market is Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin in terms of market dominance um, in during this bull market. I will be holding more Ethereum than I will be holding Bitcoin. I will still be holding Bitcoin because I still think I still That's see a value Bitcoin. system and I still see um, an importance of holding Bitcoin. Um, but I still think that Ethereum will and all of these layer twos will kind of continue to be big market players and become bigger that's market fun, players over time. That's a fun, bold claim. Um, and if if that were to be true, I think it may only be temporarily. Um, just because Ethereum has a ton of competition, and while it may work in the short run, I still think the superior technology is big. But that's just like my own personal. I, I, I think like, in the longer run, eventually that will flip back again, even if it happens, which I think is it's possible, especially in a in a bull run. But yeah, we'll see. See, uh, I, I see Bitcoin as digital case. gold, like digital gold. It will be digital gold. It's kind of yeah. it's limited supply. It will be it'll be kind of that me, asset me, like. Me, Rip Van Winkle, and Old Yellow will see you in 20 years. Oh, sure. Sure. Well, I think it will be something that, you know, like, I will hold it as kind of like, hey, this is like, I know it'll more or less in, I think, in 10, 15 years, um, once most of the supply has basically been mined, um, and most people will just be hodling Bitcoin, um, more Bitcoin than not will be just hodled. Like, yeah, I'll sit on a bunch of Bitcoin as that kind of stable asset that, you know, I can use whenever. Uh, but Ethereum has the use case, has all We're of like the different game. applicabilities that will really, really keep it going. This is not Ethereum's first bull market. Um, Ethereum's gone through multiple bull markets. I It'll mean, be in the right. last show that we talked about, like, Solano's kind of... Disappear like Solana was considered an ETH killer, disappeared. AVAX was considered an ETH killer. It hasn't disappeared, but it's a hell of a lot weaker than it was. Um, and there's a lot of layers being built on top of Ethereum. You know, like Polygon is probably oh. the strongest altcoin outside of Ethereum, having only yeah. fell fallen roughly thirty three percent, maybe a little bit more, a little bit more now. Um, from from its peak in this past bull market, and it continues to keep announcing more, um, more great partnerships. So really, there's to be more fair, stuff. you may not be wrong in your prediction. I really could see that happening. Um, yeah. So it's and, kind and of I'll like about Polygon. Yeah. It's they're, it's kind of like bad. gold is just like people value see gold as valuable because there's a limited supply and. It was determined to be valuable, and so Bitcoin could be that. Right. But um, my counter, like slapback, would be like, okay, even with your argument, there's always going to be these stories, um, like FTX or you know, just bad things happening because it's less secure, and that's always going to push people towards Bitcoin, not to anything else. Yeah, but I, I see kind of Ethereum. It can happen is... in AVAX. It can happen on Polygon. It can happen on Binance. It can happen on Ethereum. All these bad stories, you know, kind of lead to one. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, I think it will potentially turn to pushing people to Ethereum, just Ethereum itself and holding I, I, with regulation and um, yeah. self-custody yeah, being a bigger true. thing, like just hold Ethereum because Ethereum is kind of like digital sil silver, I think, is a lot of people compare it to because and it's the point used about in a lot of technologies. Like it is the base technology. Silver is used in a lot of technologies and is used in a lot of materials. And so Ethereum is kind of the silver of the blockchain because all, all the layer twos that seem to be thriving and the altcoins that seem to be thriving are on the Ethereum blockchain or building on top of Ethereum. And so I've heard, I've heard the metaphor of like something like Litecoin 
being more like silver because it's proof of work and there's more of it, right? There's four times more. Whereas Ethereum um, being referred to as like the oil. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like the, the referral to oil. oil I, I think that's because oil, there's technically a finite supply. And the, oil, the oil, you can use the oil and you can run all these different machines, all these different smart contracts. Fair enough. Whereas silver is like similar to gold and that it's like a bearer asset. It's a symbol of money. You know what I mean? But it's just gold is harder to get. So if you're actually using it, you need some silver. Yeah. But anyway, but it's... your your point about regulation is interesting because I think especially in the DeFi space, there will be winners and losers. You know, um, I think Bitcoin has kind of separated itself as the one that may be considered a um, commodity. commodity or security. Yeah. And the other ones, the regulation, there's going to pick winners and losers in, in a lot of cases. Well, like. I mean, the CFTC also considered Ethereum in their, um, in their latest report as being a commodity. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum were both considered commodities. So um, Bitcoin too. Yeah. Um, Bitcoin, huh. Bitcoin and Ethereum. So, those were kind of the the two big ones, and that was oh, part yeah, of the story yeah. that we we talked about last yeah, last yeah, week. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think you're right in terms of a lot of people will see that. Like, I think mainstream adoption for like holding Bitcoin has already really a lot of it's happened in terms of institution. So there's still more adoption to come. But I think mm-hmm. when we think about looking at use case and the, especially with the fact that Ethereum's deflationary. Um, it's Ethereum is kind of going to be the market player, and maybe it's not this bull market. Maybe it starts kind of taking that dominance, but we don't exactly break away from the Bitcoin cycle uh, just yet in this uh, this next bull market. But I think by by the next bull market, DeFi, like the the ethos that you know all the smart contracts and all the businesses and everything that's going to are going to be built on ethereum are going to kind of push bitcoin's dominance down and potentially start breaking its way from that that bitcoin uh that bitcoin cycle reward cycle and so i i'm well, bullish on I'm ethereum having this debate with you over the years Ozzy. oh that's it we'll we'll keep revisiting this debate every every few months based on how how everything's going and when there's a good news story to talk about it about so I'll, I'll try to remain unbiased and keep my you know what i mean uh well, we'll what we'll do is we'll get we'll get we'll invite uh, my buddy grant and his buddy jared on have two bitcoin maxis versus two uh two crypto maxis um well, i do like you know i'm not against crypto it's just you know, the proof's in the pudding a little bit lately. Oh, um, but I've always said that. Bitcoin for real, DeFi for fun. It's like my safer money is in Bitcoin. I dabble a little bit with a very small portion, high risk. Like I think of it as a very high risk area, just in totality. Yeah, def- it is a high risk area in totality, and Bitcoin's definitely right now the safer of all options, but. I'll Ethereum. always keep like much higher percentage than you do in Bitcoin. Like not always, but like that's my stance right now. Sure. But my stance, like how I'm approaching this next bull market, will be probably like 33% Bitcoin, 33% ETH, 33%. Um, well, not no, probably more like 40% ETH, 40% Bitcoin, and then 20% other plays uh polygon probably being a big one out of those um but and then a smaller percentage in DeFi and stuff like that but we should i think we should probably wrap it up here and and call it a show uh yeah it was fun ozzy thank you for um leading me along that was a good time yeah it was a great time i, I really had fun talking with you and just going through all the news so uh thank you everybody for tuning into the decentralized news show like subscribe and comment we we appreciate it we'll be back to you guys uh probably in 2023 uh have a happy holidays and yeah merry christmas everybody happy new year yeah
Hope you feel the joy.